Um, so we're going to get started with our first talk today, uh, which is by uh, Alexa Morales. Um, and Alexa couldn't be here this morning, but she's got a recorded version of her talk, um, which I'm going to share now. Um, and hopefully <laughs> this is going to work. Um, so if you just give me one second. Um, okay. Actually, Will, very quickly, do I have to mute myself? Can I mute myself when I do this? Um, you can see how. Will it work? I, I we'll, find out. we'll find out. We'll find out. Yeah. <laughs> but I want you to hear me sniffing in the middle of this. So. All right, I will uh, start playing. So this is Alexa's talk. I will mute myself. If you can't hear me, let me, if you can't hear anything, let me know and I'll unmute. Hi, my name is Alexa Morales. I'm a recent undergraduate at Florida International University. I'm going to be showcasing the work that I did with Dr. Charlotte Mason and others this past year on the evolution of the Lyman Alpha luminosity function during reionization. After this talk, if anyone needs further details, please refer to the archive link that's posted up here. Okay, so uh, the first stars and galaxies not visible to us uh, were surrounded by neutral hydrogen IgM bubbles that eventually reionize due to reionizing photons from stars in these galaxies. And although they're not visible to us, uh, they affect their surroundings and through the process of reionization, we can learn about the early stages of the universe. One of the main questions we ask is, how and when did these form? What are they made of? So to answer this question, we need to constrain when reionization happens. Reionization, uh, shown here, which is currently uncertain, could tell us about properties of the first galaxies that could have possibly reionized the universe. Uh, the gray curves show us the best estimate of when reionization happened, given different observations. And as an example, we can see that at about redshift seven to eight, the universe could be anywhere between zero to 80% neutral. Uh, the observations as well still have large uncertainties. And using what we know about reionization or the lack thereof, um, the more information obtained, the more these regions can shrink. And so uh, we need multiple independent ways to measure this timeline. And so using Lyman alpha emission, we formed a model for the Lyman alpha luminosity function and its evolution over a range of high redshifts. By understanding the Lyman alpha emission detections, non detections from Lyman break galaxies, and the UV luminosity function during the process of reionization, which is all based off of Charlotte's 2018 paper, we model the evolution of the Lyman alpha luminosity function at about redshift six for different neutral fractions and eventually other redshift values. And we can see how the neutral fraction effects observed Lyman alpha emission as the universe becomes increasingly ionized and thus less opaque. And so I'll be going into detail into how we develop each component of the model in the next few slides. But we ultimately concluded that the shape of the Lyman alpha luminosity function changes as it become, becomes ionized, as well as increases. And we can use this to compare and interpret observations made by others. And so uh, here we have an example of the observational Lyman alpha luminosity function taken from the Silver Rush surveys where generally the luminosity function shows the number density of galaxies with a given luminosity or magnitude. And there will be many more of them in this talk. And so uh, moving backwards in time, you can clearly see that as redshift increases, the amount of galaxies observed declines. And so we ask, uh, how do we interpret these observations? What do they tell us about the evolution of galaxies and reionization? Uh, we know that there's fewer galaxies at higher redshifts but how much of this evolution is through the decline of galaxies existing as we look back into higher redshifts or possibly also due to absorption during reionization. So to get more information from these observations, we can build a model that separates redshift and the neutral fraction. We can fix either parameter and see how the observations adjust to our model. And so uh, here we have our Lyman alpha luminosity function model taken from Max Franke's 2015 paper. 
uh, we can predict the number density of Lyman alpha emitters by using the Lyman alpha probability dis distribution, uh, which is the probability for a galaxy to have a certain Lyman alpha luminosity combined with the UV luminosity function model as functions of UV magnitude, neutral fraction, and redshift to model the Lyman alpha luminosity function. And this integral is then multiplied by a normalization constant f, which we determine by calibrating our observations. And so um, here we show the Lyman alpha luminosity versus its probability distribution for UV bright and faint galaxies. And this is where uh, the neutral fraction modeling comes in. So the Lyman alpha transmission impact, which describes the fraction of Lyman alpha flux that reaches the observer once it passes through the IGM, which can be seen as this uh, Patrick bubble image, is created by using simulations of Lyman alpha equivalent widths that are generated using an inhomogeneous randomization simulation. We can simulate what these galaxies would look like as their Lyman alpha passes through these patchy regions. And as shown, when the neutral fraction is increased to a neutral environment for both UV bright and faint galaxies, the probability of there being uh, bright Lyman alpha galaxies becomes lower than in an ionized environment. Uh, and so here we have the UV magnitude range for UV bright and faint galaxies versus the expectation value of the Lyman alpha of the Lyman alpha luminosity, uh, which is shown in this uh, equation. Generally, we expect galaxies with brighter UV emission to have brighter Lyman alpha luminosity. And so we see that there's not much increase in the luminosity for bright galaxies. Uh, they exist in dense luminous regions of the universe where large amounts of Lyman alpha photons are transmitted regardless of the neutral fraction. UV faint galaxies, which have a larger increase, uh, typically exist in less dense IGM regions with fewer galaxies uh, that don't reionize until much later and are more neutral than the dense regions where bright galaxies live. Uh, we estimate our fudge factor F by maximizing our defined likelihood from our model at a redshift 5.7 and a neutral fraction of about zero to observations, uh, assuming it is after the occurrence of ionization. Uh, we remarkably attain a uh, value for F of 0 0.974, which is then used for all Lyman alpha luminosity functions at, at all redshifts and neutral fraction values. And with this fudge factor so close to one, uh, this means that the Lyman alpha luminosity distribution for Lyman break galaxies uh, describes Lyman alpha emitters at a redshift of about six. And so now with all this background information explained, I present our predicted Lyman alpha luminosity function model and its comparison with observations. Okay, and so uh, using the observations previously shown, we plot our new model alongside these observations. And on the x-axis, we have the Lyman alpha luminosity, on the Y, the number density of galaxies associated with those luminosity values. Each model line corresponds to a different neutral fraction, and we view this model at each particular redshift where the observations were obtained. At any redshift, uh, the luminosity function doesn't evolve strongly enough uh, for neutral fraction values less than 40%, meaning that it really isn't a sensitive tool for the end of reionization. But we do see that it is consistent uh, with observations less than equal to redshift 6.6. And then shifting from redshift 6.6 to 7.3 at about 40% neutrality, we see a drop in the model in terms of the neutral fraction uh, and the observations fit along a more neutral IGM. Overall, though, uh, we do see an increase in the Lyman alpha luminosity function with redshift. Uh, this is confirmed by observations. So once we created our model uh, for the Lyman alpha luminosity function at any given redshift or neutral fraction value, we use best fit Schechter function models across a range of high redshifts 5 to 10 to see the trends in each parameter for a 0 to 100% neutral IGM environment. But we see that alpha increases as the universe becomes more ionized. This is the same for L star and phi star. Any wiggles that are seen in the plots can be caused by redshift. Alpha, which is uh, the power law faint and slow parameter of the, of the luminosity function, shows an overall decreasing trend 
as redshift increases, we see alpha decreases more significantly due to the neutral gas than it does with redshift uh, because this Lyman alpha attenuation affects faint galaxies more, making them fainter and forcing them further back into the Lyman alpha luminosity function. Uh, L star, which is the characteristic luminosity, is shown to decrease at a redshift five to seven and then increases at redshift eight. This is possibly due to the UV luminosity function evolution and its model for the dust inside of galaxies at that redshift. A reduction in the dust obscuration where younger, brighter galaxies at higher redshifts uh, contain less dust gives the possibility of observing them and uh, shifts the luminosity function model towards higher luminosities. Uh, phi star, which is the normalization point, decreases overall. Uh, so here we have our reionization history timeline updated with our new values. Uh, once we established our model, uh, we decided to determine the evolution of the neutral fraction using the Bayesian approach. Uh, similar to finding the likelihood for the fudge factor, we use Chalet's split on likelihood equation for each luminosity function bin and a uniform prior on um, the neutral fraction. We find that the Lyman alpha observations prefer later and rapid reionization that is consistent within two sigma confidence intervals with other observations at similar redshifts. These values can be seen on the timeline as the red points. Uh, we make predictions for these surveys. Uh, we, we plot our model Lyman alpha luminosity function and the approximate median neutral fraction value based on the reionization history allowed by the CMB optical depth and the dark pixel fraction at each redshift, also based on Charlotte's 2019 paper uh, between redshifts 6 to 10, shown as the gray shaded regions in our reionization history plot. Uh, we see that these surveys uh, will be able to detect Lyman alpha uh, emitters at high redshifts. To summarize, um, the evolving shape of the Lyman alpha luminosity function can provide more information about the IGM state. Ultimately, we can use this information about the evolving shape to learn about the timeline of reionization and the evolving neutral fraction. Uh, with our model for the Lyman alpha luminosity function and its fit alongside observations, we can constrain the timeline of reionization further and provide evidence for a late and really rapid reionization uh, that's consistent with others' approaches. Uh, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to present my work here for you all. If anyone has any questions, please feel free to message me through Slack or to send me an email noted here at the bottom. Thank you so much.